Welcome to Insight, today produced in collaboration with KCOS 13 El Paso Public Television. Today we are chatting with Isis Portillo, Executive Director of Latinitas El Paso Region. Isis has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Isis, for joining us today. Thank you. So this is a really interesting organization that empowers young women. Talk about Latinitas. Yes, we empower young women through media and technology. And Latinitas has so many different ways of empowering them. Uh, the young women that come to our workshops and our conferences and our summer camp uh, and our clubs. But, um, you know, it's just a combination of so much, Mark, uh, that I guess going through each one of them is going to help everybody understand really what the mission is. So let's, let's unpack a little bit. How many, how many uh, young women participate in Latinitas annually? Annually, we have about 200 participants here in El Paso, and that includes our summer camp that is at three weeks. We have all of our clubs that meet on a weekly basis, and then we have workshops that we offer throughout the year, and then our main ones are our conferences for the spring and the summer. And you're, and you're transferring skills. You're basically taking uh, cultural stereotypes, gender stereotypes, and you're ignoring them. Yes. And, and so you're, you're focusing on for example, media production. When Latinitas first started in 2002, it was by two journalists that felt that media representation for women and for Latinas was not you know, available for them. They were not getting a lot of jobs. So when they uh, first looked at that, it was you know, just as a piece of how can you communicate and how can you express yourself through journalism. And uh, eventually that just took on a different role, you know, that where we were, you know, tapping into, um, you know, uh, I guess culturally uh, a side that nobody had ever even expressed. And even, and even now, media representation for Latinas is not there. Um, so once that started, I mean, who would have known that media was going to change so much in the last 15 years? Now with all the mobile media that, that, that we have and we have... Um we have the ability to film uh, from our from our telephones, which uh, Apple really introduced in in uh, 2007, or in the next iteration of iPhones. You you actually have a a full media studio in your hand as you're walking down the street. Can you believe that? Everything that we went to school to learn, they know how to do now at a very young age. And it is another way to express themselves. And so Latinitas continue to use that side. And that is the technology and media side where, I mean, everything has just evolved, you know, podcasting. Um, the young women, you know, expressing through blog, through uh, online. Uh, there's just so much going on in that digital world that we've expanded ourselves to it and em embraced it in all of our camps and all of our workshops. That's exactly what we are looking at. And, uh, and it's taken a whole life of its own. So let's look at this from a business perspective. Um, we're a media company. Um, and we are actually in the studios of another media company, uh, KCOS 13, El Paso Public Television. From our perspectives as media companies, what kind of skills do your participants uh, learn uh, through their participation in Latinitas? Do they learn, for example, how to use a camera and how to, uh, to shoot uh, video? Yes, of course, how to interview, how to edit, um... How to how, construct a piece? How to construct a piece, how to be able to put it down in writing, um, you know, I mean, everything. I mean, these young women, not only through media, but they're, they're even doing marketing skits. They come up with products. I mean, their imagination is takes them to a whole different level. And I feel that we learn as adults a lot more from them and what they're doing. But there is, you know, some sort of education process through all of that so that they know exactly what they're doing along with responsibilities of what they're, you know, doing with their technology and their expression, their freedom of expression. So what kind of technologies do they learn how to use? What kind of software do they learn how to well, use? Well, I mean, they're editing through Adobe, which I think is very good because a lot of TV stations and radio stations use it. And even at a one-day workshop, they learn how to use it. They have to edit a piece after they're done with whatever they learned that day. And, um, you know, I, I keep on saying, you know, they're nine years old and they could walk into a TV station and radio station and have a conversation with somebody in production and know that they know how to do the same things 
probably not with the experience, but they know how to do a lot of the things that they're already doing. So they're creating uh, uh, cuts, they're doing color correction, they're, they're looking at sound and editing for sound. They're, in, they're editing for interview flow and for content? Absolutely. They're even learning how to do documentaries and they're learning how to do even, you know, we had a, a grant this past year, which was Cinema Chica. So they put together a documentary in three weeks about what they felt, uh, you know, was good content for them. We are not uh, able to, you know, change it for them. It has to be that group of girls that gets together. And it was, I mean, a documentary, right? Who would have thought? Right, and that is their voice. That's it was, their voice. It, it was not. It was not directed by adults. It was their voice. And that was their voice. Yes, we uh, we allow them. That's the main thing the Latin does. Does you know, genderly and culturally, what is it that you have to say and put it in writing, put it on video. Let's go ahead and talk about what you're you know what you're feeling, and uh, and we put it through media, and it was a great piece. So what what other um, uh, uh, pieces do you? Uh, produce and how do you expose the public to those pieces? Well, we have a magazine that we were publishing, and of course, once again, with the transition of, of digi the digital world taking over the magazine, we're not publishing it, but we have it online, and you can see work from 15 years ago of how women, you know, the young women that were going to college for the first time. I mean, we have stories of young girls that were participants of Latinitas that had to run away from home to go to college because their parents were not wanting them to go to school. And so when you read all of those blogs and all of those, you know, um, uh, their expressions and, and where they were at, uh, you know, on, you know, on our, on our website, it's, it's a great source for us to get some content and find out exactly what's going on through their minds and how we have evolved uh, since then. There's also a strategic element here. One of the ways to deal with barriers is to make those barriers completely irrelevant. It's about power. Univision is uh, is a wonderful example of that, but there are other examples as well. So by empowering, by creating, and then allowing yourself to learn the directorial skills, and then you allow yourself to learn the producing skills, and so now you now you've learned how to pull uh, put together resources to allow the the production of of content and. You now have directors who can who can direct that content, and and um, and journalists and and other media uh, people, whether they're editors or camera people, who can actually deliver that content. All of a sudden, the barriers don't exist because you've become so powerful that the barriers become irrelevant. They begin to evaporate, yeah. and that's essentially what you're doing. Yeah, and I love that because there are a lot of more things that, I mean, a lot of things that we should be talking about, uh, whether it's just cultural or whether it's, you know, gender. Um, there's a lot of things that we should be reporting. There's a lot of things that we should be helping each other to, you know, work through it and, you know, become stronger and uh, finding a voice. And uh, like you said, not having the barriers that we've had um, this far. And it's okay to be able to bring sometimes subjects that may not be appealing to everybody, but you know, the Latino population in the United States is huge. And when you look at the Mexican American Latino in the United States, we're a big percentage. I believe the last uh, statistics that I read was 67% of the Latinos in the United States are Mexican American. So here in El Paso, we have a huge pool to gather information of what we like, what we don't like, um, what are our shopping trends? Marketers want to find out what is going on with our community. And, and cover news from, from diverse perspectives. If you cover an issue, and you cover that issue from multiple perspectives, all of a sudden truths are revealed that were previously hidden. There's another issue here in that what is the consequence of disempowering? You, you and I were chatting uh, before, before we started the cameras about... Uh, some of the experiences that disempowered Latinas have and some of the consequences in terms of suicide rate and other, other invisible shadows that, that fall across um, the lives of, of young women who are disempowered. Talk a little bit about that. Gosh, and I think that's probably, like I told you before, the most alarming side of it. But being a Latina myself, I can really look at this information and be able to process it and then talk about it in a different way so that even people 
uh, will understand what it is that we're thinking and why we think and the position that we may have culturally. Uh, but one out of seven Latinas as a teenager attempts suicide. One out of seven One out of Latinas. seven. And that was alarming for me because I don't think we even talk about it. You know, um, and, and I'm going to be quite frank with you. A lot of the times it's like, you know, because of, you know, not the lack of money or the lack of education, we just really don't address those issues. And I've known family of mine that at one point, maybe they weren't feeling so good. And it's like, well, it's because you have nothing else to do. Or those sicknesses are of people that have money. And so we continue to ignore it. And this is an alarming um, number, and we should be talking about so it. That's fourteen percent. That's that's a huge number. That's a huge number. So through all of what Latinitas does, we do address those issues, issues of you know self love, uh, you know, and if you're feeling sad, then what better way to do it than to go ahead and write about you know how you're feeling through poetry or let's let's blog about it, and those are very important things to do because they say that once you talk about it, then you, it puts it into perspective. And I'm hoping that this all puts it into perspective even for parents so that they understand that that can happen and that it's not because you don't have anything else to worry about or you're not cleaning the house enough that you're thinking of those things. They're issues. And, and it's great to be able to have a platform to be able to talk about them. So how's this for a win, win, win? You change the lives of young women. You change the uh, lives of an entire community. You reveal new knowledge by reporting on the world from different perspectives. You strengthen business access to skilled labor. You create an empowered community. This organization, ISIS, is doing such a wonderful job. Thank you so much thank for sharing so the work. Thank you so much. No, thank you so much for picking us to talk about it. And I, I love it. Latinitas El Paso, thank you so much for sharing the work of your young women, and thank you so much for your insights. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>